The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. I wooed my gal with music soft and finally won her hand When I got smart and switched right to that happy, lucky brand Throughout the South and up North, too, most smokers will agree For perfect mildness and rich taste, smoke LSMFT Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today Friends, enjoy your cigarette. If you're not happy with your present brand, and a 38 city survey shows that millions of smokers are not, switch to Lucky Strike. With every Lucky you light, you always get complete smoking enjoyment. That happy blending of perfect mildness and rich, true taste that fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco, can give you. And remember, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for all the deep down smoking enjoyment you want and deserve in your cigarette, be happy, go lucky, make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take you back about an hour before the broadcast. At the moment, Jack is in his dressing room talking to Rochester. Say, Rochester, the rehearsal went pretty good today, didn't it? I guess so. I thought the script sounded very funny, didn't you? It was all right. <laughs> Rochester, what's the matter? You've been acting kind of blue all day. What's wrong? Well, I'll have to tell you sometime, so I might as well do it now. I'm going to leave you. Leave me? Why? Well, boss, let's put it this way. You know that Bank of America down on the corner by your house? Yes. Well, I've been passing it for 15 years, and just once I'd like to turn in. <laughs> oh, stop. You get everything you want. A nice home, food, clothes. Besides that, I give you pin money. I know, but stick me a little deeper, boy. <laughs> Rochester, I'm hurt to think that money could come between us after all this time. Why, well, you've been with me for 14 years. 15 years, boss. No, 14. 15? I came to work for you the first year you were 39. <laughs> oh, stop bragging. I was 39 before I ever met you. <laughs> anyway, Rochester, you're not going to leave me. Yes, I am. I got another offer. Another offer? Look, Rochester, you do hard work. I have been thinking of giving you a raise, and... Well, since this is the start of a new year, you may as well get it now. Tell me, how much am I paying you? You mean including withholding tax, Social Security, uh, deductions, and unemployment insurance? Yes. We break even and shake hands. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's all going to be changed. Starting today, I'm giving you a $10 a week raise. What have you got to say to that? Oh, that's wonderful, boss. Wonderful. Excuse me a minute. I know you're kidding. So stop making up a lot of things. Come in. Hey, Jackson, I've finished rehearsing the band. Good, good. We're going to run through the script again? No, it isn't necessary, Don. Oh, I still have to rehearse my song. We'll do it later, Dennis. Come on in and relax a while. You know, fellas, I was thinking that perhaps we could... Oh, Phil, for heaven's sake, watch what you're doing. You're mussing up my hair. I'm sorry, Jackson. I didn't see it there when I sat down. <laughs> Well, be more careful next time. Throw it up in the air, Phil. I've got my slingshot. <laughs> now, cut. 
that out. I wish you fellas wouldn't upset me right before the show. Oh, now, what's the matter, Jack? Why are you so nervous? Don, you know I'm always on edge right before a broadcast. Jackson, I can't understand you. What do you got to be nervous about? What? Why don't you be like me? Like you? Certainly. When I do a show, I just walk out and stand in the middle of the stage, look the audience right in the eye, and defy them not to like me. I... I should do that? Yeah, but first marry money, like I did. <laughs> I knew there was a catch to it. Listen, Phil, when I have to do... Come in. Oh, it's Mel Blank. Hi, Mel. Hello, Mr. Blenny. Here's that dollar I owe you for the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mel. Hey, Mel, you bet on California, huh? No, I didn't bet. Then why do you owe Jackson a dollar? I watched the game on his television set. <laughs> All right, all right. See you later, Mel. Yeah, so long. <laughs> By the way, Don, you should have come oh, over. Oh, I didn't have to, Jack. I was at the game. Oh. And it was really exciting. But the most thrilling thing of all was when Michigan won and they carried Coach Oosterban out of the bowl. That's right. That's well, right. say, Phil, what did you win? Me? Yeah, I saw them carry you out, too. <laughs> I was the only one who cheered. <laughs> Look, Dennis. Boy, was I proud. Phil's my friend. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, you can stop being proud. Out of the 98,939 people at the Rose Bowl, your friend was the only one who didn't know Michigan won till January the 4th. <laughs> Your friend over there. Now, Don, would you do me a favor? Oh, hold it. Now, there's a phone. Hello? Oh, hello. How are you? Look, I'm just trying to be polite. Dennis, it's your mother. <laughs> Thank you. Hello? Oh, yes, mother. Well, mother, you told me to take off the ornaments and then burn the Christmas tree, so I burned it. Well, you didn't say anything about taking it out of the house. <laughs> What? All right, Mother. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Dennis, what happened? Same as last year, our house burned down. <laughs> oh, well, fortunately, your mother's a carpenter. Now, Don... <laughs> didn't expect that laugh. Now, Don... <laughs> would you... Don, would you go out on the stage? Don, would you go out on the stage and see that everything is ready for the broadcast? Oh, okay, Jack. Oh, I'll go with you, Don. <laughs> Now, Dennis, while I'm taking care of the scripts, you see that the boys in the band have the music I for you. I beg your pardon, but could you tell me where Studio A is? Well, yes, it's right around the... Uh, wait a minute, aren't you Deborah Carr? Yes, I am. I'm certainly glad to see you. I'm Don Wilson. Yes, I know. And this is Dennis Day, isn't it? Yes. Dennis, you know Deborah Carr. Uh, how do you do, Miss Carr? <laughs> Hello, Dennis. Uh, uh, Deborah, Jack's in his dressing room. I'll call him. Oh, Jack! Jack! What is it, Don? Look who's here! Well, if it isn't Deborah Kerr. <laughs> Hello, Deborah. Hello, Jack. Jack, her name is pronounced Carr, isn't it, Deborah? Yes, but that's all right. A lot of people make that mistake. What do you mean mistake? It's spelled K-E-R-R, -R, isn't it? Yes, but in England, it's pronounced Carr. Oh. Just like here in America, you say Derby, and over there, we say Derby. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that reminds me. Yesterday, I was in the Brown Derby, and I ran into Clerk Gable. <laughs> was good. <laughs> you know, he was having barst. <laughs> it's borscht over there, too. Oh, oh. Well, if you'll excuse me, Miss Carr, but we have a few last-minute things to do before we start the broadcast. Yes, yes, go ahead, Don. 
Uh, tell me, Deborah, what are you doing here at CBS? I came down to see a television show. Some friends of mine are on it. Oh, really? You know, Deborah, I did a television program. Yes, I know, Jack. I saw it. That was about ten weeks ago, wasn't it? Yes, yes, and now I'm going to do another one. So soon? <laughs> I mean, with your radio shows and all, how do you find time? Well, it is difficult. But you know, Deborah, it's such a coincidence running into you today when only last night I saw your latest picture, King Solomon's Mind. Oh, did you like it? Yes, I saw it at a drive-in and I thought it was just great, but I missed the very end of it. You did? Yeah, you see, the fog came up suddenly and I, I couldn't see the last 50 seconds of the picture. Oh, well, if you wish, I'll tell you how it ended. No, no, it wouldn't be fair. I... Got my money back. <laughs> but... <laughs> but, Deborah, uh, King Solomon's Mind was really exciting, and you and Stuart Granger were wonderful in it. But I must tell you a little secret. For a while, the producer was considering me for the part. Well, Jack, I'm certainly glad I got it. <laughs> no, 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 I meant uh, Stuart Granger's part. I think. I, mean, <laughs> I would have loved to have gone to Africa. I bet you got a kick out of it. Well, most of it was fun, but we had one horrible experience. We ran into a tribe of savages. They were so fierce-looking, so wild-eyed, and so completely uncivilized. Oh, I never want to see a sight like that again. Then you better close your eyes. Here comes Phil Harris as musicians. Look out! What a gang. Yes, the one with the clarinet looks like an anteater. <laughs> uh, it is an anteater. Phil doesn't know it. But, um, now, Deborah, getting back to King Solomon's Mines, and believe me, I don't want to sound like a ham or that I'm envious of Stuart Granger, because I'm not. But if I had played that part, I would have done it a little bit differently. I would have sort of changed things around. But, Jack, you couldn't change the locale. No, no, Deborah, I didn't mean that. I would have kept it in that same place, in the heart of Africa, in the same treacherous jungle with the savages constantly singing their chants and beating their native drums. Yes, I would have done it something like this. My name is Alan Quatermain. My business is leading safaris through the animal-infested jungles of dark Africa. For 12 years, I had lived among the savages in the Belgian Congo. I lived in a little village called Nairobi, Sekarnyanjo, Kenzo, Boziga, Uganda, Watusi, Tanganyika. <laughs> my friends stopped writing to me because my address was driving him nuts. <laughs> they couldn't remember my zone number. <laughs> That's why I decided to leave the treacherous life of the jungle and go back to England. In fact, I was in my hut packing, happy in the knowledge that I would soon stop hearing the monotonous beat of those infernal drums. Let me see now. I think I've got everything packed. I can hardly believe it. In three short weeks, I'll be back home. Gosh, I haven't seen a civilized woman in over... Uga bogey. <laughs> yes, sir. It'll sure be good getting back. Uga bogey. <laughs> Dog gone at Uga bogey means come in. Those natives don't even understand their own language. I said Uga. Well. stand there staring at me. Aren't you going to ask me to ooga bogey? Yes, yes, come in. Come right in. Are you Alan Quatermain? Her voice was so beautiful. Even the name Alan 
sounded good to me. <laughs> yes, I'm Quartermain. What can I do for you? I heard that you're the best guide in Africa, and I want to hire you to lead a safari through the jungle. Well, you're too late. I was just packing to go back to England. But I've traveled thousands of miles to see you. I'm sorry, miss. My mind is made up. But you can't. You can't turn me down. It's a matter of life and death. Please, please, you've got to listen to me. I've come all this way to see you because you're the only one who can help me. So don't turn me down. Please. I beg you. I implore you. Please, please say you will do it. I need you. I need you. I need you. As she lay there, crumpled at my feet. <laughs> Exhausted from her dramatic outburst, I was confused. I couldn't tell whether she was after me or an Academy Award. I'm sorry, miss, but I've had enough of the jungle and I'm going back to England. Oh, but, Mr. Quatermain, I'm trying to find my lost uncle. He came to the jungle to write a book. His name is Sylvania Cartwright. Sylvania? That was his pen name. Oh, yes, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That writer, I'm firing. <laughs> so your uncle is lost, eh? Yes, he came here two years ago to do some research on King Solomon's Mines. King Solomon's Mines? Well, that's just a myth. There's no such place. Oh, but there is. My brother has a map. Your brother? Yes, he's right outside. I'll call him in. Oh, brother, come in here. So you're her brother, eh? Yeah, you want to make something out of it? <laughs> decided to go on this dangerous trek through the death-infested jungle, if only to lose him. <laughs> All right, I'll go with you, but before we leave, you'll have to sign this register. Certainly. Hmm, that's a pretty name. Deborah Kerr. That's Carr. Carr? Yeah, you want to make something out of it? <laughs> Not wanting to cheat a hungry leopard out of an hors d'oeuvre, <laughs> I didn't lay a hand on him. <laughs> Next morning, I formed a safari with 22 natives carrying water, food, and supplies. We set out on our dangerous journey. For miles and miles and miles, the natives sang their tribal chant as we hacked our way through the jungle. <laughs> What's the matter? Stay close together. This is very dangerous territory. There may be a line lurking behind every bush. Quiet, everybody. It's that bush, it just moved. The natives will circle it. Then after I shoot, they'll dive in and grab it. What do you think it is? I don't know, but if it's a line, we'll skin it. If it's a gazelle, we'll eat it. Quiet now. They got it! They got it! Umba kaloda nuwamba! Samoya lona mawaka kahona! Well, at least the natives can eat. What did you shoot? Your brother. <laughs> See that hole in his head? Oh, he's always had that. <laughs> oh. But you did enlarge it. Oh, I shot him all right. But I still couldn't get rid of him. Our goal was King Solomon's mines. And her brother was the only one who had the map. It was painted on the roof of his mouth. <laughs> he did it himself. Of course, he had to buy the brush and the paints. He had his own palette. <laughs> when I heard myself saying a thing like that, I knew the sun was hotter than I thought. <laughs> but we had to trek on if we ever expected to reach our first stopping place. The village of Kalawana. As our safari pushed through the jungle, our natives sang their tribal chant.
the conga, no, 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 no. Now the bingle, bangle, bongo, we're so happy in the jungle, we refuse to go. We must admit your video makes us giddy, so let's get this clear. Just as long as we have luckies, we'll stay right here. Oh, bonga, 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 you can have your kookamonga and a high or a zoo. There is nothing in Kentucky like puffing on a lucky in your own canoe. No puff is ever rough, there's no rough puff in luckies, you know. So don't forget to take along a lot of luckies wherever you go. up in that tree. Where? There. <laughs> What's strange about that? It's the first time I ever saw a woodpecker with a moustache. <laughs> You'll see many strange things deep in the jungle. <laughs> Look out for that lion. Oh, Watermaid, I'm frightened. How much further is it to Kalawana? About 15 miles. Gee, that isn't so bad. Why, no, it's... What? <laughs> Did you hear that, Deborah? Your brother talked, and I thought I killed him. I carried him for two weeks. He tricked us. The cur... That's car. <laughs> oh, yes. Come here, brother. Open your mouth so I can look at the map. Come on, open your mouth. Wider. Wider. <laughs> Not you. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, brother, hold your mouth open so I can look at the map. I looked in his mouth, and I was able to see the map very clearly now, because the light was coming through the hole in his head. <laughs> Deborah, according to the map, we must be close to the village of Kalawana right now. Aganuamawa! Aganuamawa! Quatermain, wait, wait! Akua! What's wrong, Deborah? I can't go on. I'm so thirsty. I must have something to drink. Well, I was saving this for myself, but here, you can have it. What is it? Snake milk. <laughs> Snake milk? How in the world do you get snake milk? Oh, the usual way, but you need a very low stool. <laughs> Don't throw away the bottle. I get two cents back. <laughs> Let's go. Aganuamawa! <laughs> What's the matter, Quatermain? We must be near the village. Look, there's a horse. And there's a pig. <laughs> and there's a rabbit. <laughs> What's up, Doc? <laughs> we really didn't see those animals. But if you think I'm going to pay Mel Blank just to do a lousy woodpecker, you're crazy. <laughs> of 
Talawana. And as we approached, the native chief came running up to us excitedly and said, Lala Boogie Mala Kola Hana Noya. Huh? Lala Boogie Mala Kola Hana Noya. Uh, Quatermain, this native is asking us something, but we don't understand. I'll find out what he wants. Nula Magena? Lala Boogie Mala Kola Hana Noya. Oh, oh. Michigan 14, California says. <laughs> Tell me, Chief, where is King Solomon's mines? Maga! 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 When I mentioned King Solomon's mines, the whole tribe turned on us. They're frenzy mountains. They tied us to stakes and built a huge fire around us. Deborah became panicked. Quatermain! Quatermain! Help me! Help me! Panic, Deborah! Hurry! As I stood there helpless, a native painted in grotesque colors grabbed Deborah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this exciting epic of the jungle will be continued next week. Will Jack and Deborah escape from the cannibals? Will they find King Solomon's mines? Will Mel Blanc get paid? <laughs> Tune in next Sunday for the closing episode of King Solomon's Mines! With our special guest star, Deborah Kerr. That's Carr. Oh, yes. <laughs> back in just a moment, but first, let's join some winter sports at a mountain ski lodge. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. I run a winter sporting lodge for skating and for skiing, but the favorite sport of everyone is LSMFTing. Good skiing snow reminds me of the cigarette I like. It's always firm and fully packed. You know it's Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Go lucky strike today. Friends, are you happy with your cigarette? Here's why I ask. A recent 38 city survey shows that millions of smokers are not happy with the brand they're smoking. Now, if this is true of you and you want complete smoking enjoyment, switch to Lucky Strike. You see, fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you that happy blending of perfect mildness and rich, true taste. Everything you want in a cigarette. And everybody knows LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So friends, really enjoy your cigarette. Be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we continue with the second episode of King Solomon's Mind, starring Deborah Carr, through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Deborah, thanks so much for being on our show. We want you to be here next week at the same time. Well, do I get paid again next week? No. You see, if you hadn't argued so much about the pronunciation of your name, we could have finished it tonight. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a fella needs a friend, he needs a helping hand. In the hands of the big brothers have helped thousands of growing boys to find their way to useful life. Be a big brother yourself. All you have to invest is your time and your interest. Write Big Brother of America, Philadelphia 3, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center. <laughs>